Thank you so much for the kind words of introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can I have a good afternoon back? Just to ensure that nobody is sleeping behind. OK. So I have, I'm going to be uh, speaking on coffee. Uh, what is the evidence of benefit? And believe me, when I, when I was given this talk, even I didn't know much about coffee. And uh, this has been indeed a learning experience as to what does coffee have. So interestingly, its origin began in 10th century, where it was originally planted in Africa, in the Ethiopian mountains. But from there, it uh, slides are not coming. So you don't need to see a hint. OK, fine. So uh, it actually spread all over. And the place where coffee became popular as a drink was Yemen. And actually, a priest from Yemen came to India with these coffee seeds smuggled into his uh, baggage. And he planted them in Karnataka. And that is how he planted them in Nilgiris in Karnataka. And that is how coffee became popular in India. Okay. Um, then there are two main species of coffee. There is coffee arabica, and there is coffee senophora, uh, which is also called as coffee robusta. Now, coffee arabica is a pure coffee. It's a pure line selection. So coffee arabica is very, very expensive. It's available everywhere, but it's an expensive coffee as compared to robusta, which is, uh, which is uh, you know, a kind of coffee which is more resistant to other problems of like pest and etc. Hence, it's cheaper, but it's more acidic in flavor. Now, when I was reading all this, the first thing I wondered is the coffee I like is South Indian filter coffee. So I was like, what is that? You know, I don't know whether it is Robusta or Arabica. And I tried to go online. And then what I found is coffee served in India is usually 80% Arabica and 20% Robusta. And therefore, we really have good quality coffee. 80% of it is really good coffee that we are having. Now, also, uh, I shouldn't say this in a talk on coffee, but I like instant coffee. I like Nescafe. OK, and it, much too, you know, it's not a nice thing to say, but I do like instant coffee. And what is instant coffee? So instant coffee is like milk powder. So in what, does hap what happens in milk powder? It's sprayed dried, right? So in instant coffee, coffee is prepared, and it is sprayed dried. And hence, you have those granules which immediately mix as soon as you add hot water or hot milk to it. So that is the instant coffee. And nobody knows whether it is Arabica or it is Robusta, because different coffee companies, it depends on the cost of the coffee you're buying. So if you're buying the cheaper one, it's going to be Robusta. And otherwise, it's going to be Arabica. Now, this is more nutritional. So coffee is a, has a very complex composition constituted by thousands of biologically active compounds, of which the known one is only caffeine. But believe me, that is just one part of a huge matrix. So it has trigoline, phenolic compounds like chlorogenic acid, diterpenes, caffeinol, cavinol, soluble fibers, and there are many, many more metabolites, which I have uh, not say, said. Then caffeine content, you know, because Arabica is an expensive pure line coffee, it's mild. So its caffeine content is lower than a robusta. So if you want to sit up at night and study and stuff like that, Robusta is answer for you. And I don't know what happened to the picture here. But there was a very nice picture which showed what coffee can do. So caffeine is absorbed. So there is Gita here. And this is the first time when Gita spoke on this in a nutrigenomics talk. And when I was making this slide, Gita was the only person I was remembering. So um, caffeine will, is absorbed into systemic circulation within 45 minutes. And it reaches blood, peak blood concentrations at 1.5 hours. 90% of it is cleared in, for, in 20 minutes. Kidney tubules predominant, promptly reabsorb the caffeine. And only 5% is excreted unchanged in the urine. But it also depends upon your genetic composition. Not everybody, you know, some people can process it much faster and it can leave the body much faster. So caffeine occupies adenosine receptor site that can act as a competitive inhibitor of brain receptors and therefore they increase alertness. And that is the reason why we have coffee. Now, what are the physiological effects of coffee? Caffeine has several uh, effects on cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, and renal system. It causes a modest increase in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And at a higher doses, it can also cause tachycardia and arrhythmias. And therefore, if people are getting anxious or they have high blood pressure, typically you tell them, do not have coffee. 
Coffee also increases GFR and therefore it exerts a diuretic effect. And that is why when we are traveling, we try not to drink coffee because we need to use bathroom much more frequently. It stimulates digestive secretion, induces relaxation of intestinal smooth muscles and, de uh, de uh, and depresses the lower sphincter of esophagus and, pro uh, pro and produces relaxation of bronchial smooth muscles. I really don't know what has happened. Pictures kyun nahi aare? I don't know. There were photographs which are not coming. So, okay. So, there are, this is coffee and metabolic health again. These are the impacts of coffee on different um, uh, systems. So, in blood pressure, you will see that it increases sympathetic activation and it decreases the oxidative stress. So, the impact on blood pressure is that it can, impact, it can cause higher blood pressure. There is data to show that in case of waist circumference, also, um, uh, coffee can decrease accumulation of triglycerides in the body. Glucose metabolism, it increases insulin secretion. It decreases the damage of pancreatic beta cells. So this is the impact on blood sugar. And on lipid metabolism, it decreases lipid synthesis, decreases the beta oxidation in case of lipids. I don't know what has happened to my slides. I don't seem to see them. Do you have the pen drive, Kavita? Just one sec. Okay. So these are side effects of coffee. You know, that was a nice slide on what are the effects. I'll talk about side effects before I talk about the effects. So roasting. See, you buy green coffee beans and then you roast them. Roasting causes Millard's reaction. And this Millard's reaction actually causes causes it to produce many acrylamide and polyaromatic hydrocarbons and all these compounds, levels of these compounds need to, be, need to be monitored. Then there is toxic effect of caffeine, especially in psychiatric disorder and on people who are taking uh, psychiatric drugs. So uh, drug interactions is with antipsychotics, hormones and vitamins. And coffee consumption has been associated with severe uh, gastrointestinal problems, including peptic ulcer, gastroesophageal reflux disease. But some, sh uh, some trials actually show different results. And let me see if I can put this and show you those slides. Saving in one. Kya what? Yeah, the system needs coffee. Shilpa. Kai? Shilpa, Shilpa. Hmm. Hmm. There is caffeine, and these are the effects of caffeine. It is a, a regulation of reactive oxy oxygen species production by blocking adenosine receptor and others. Then there is chlorogenic acid, which, is the, which causes inhibition of protein tyrosine phosphate 1B. And there is cafesol and choline, which reduces the expression of COX-2 and I INOS due to inhibition of NF-kappa-beta activity. And all of these together actually cause the anti-inflammatory effect of coffee. And this is the better slide where it has shown that there is a risk of diabetes. It decreases risk of diabetes, decreases risk of hypertension, decreases abdominal obesity, decreases triglyceride, increases HDL cholesterol. But one word of caution, this is not coffee with milk and sugar. Huh? This is coffee. Then if you're going to add milk, sugar, cream, and other thousand things to it, this is not going to happen. Okay, and these are impacts of coffee. And again, here, if you see, it has been shown, if you see the, the one on mortality, it's a busy slide, I know, but it has an impact on mortality. But in cardiovascular diseases, more than six cups of coffee a day has, is associated with high risk of stroke and valve stenosis. So that is something that one has to keep in mind. That's it. Thank you so much for a patient hearing. And I'm